Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Tamim Kadash. I'm an interventional radiologist and assistant professor at the Hospital of University of Pennsylvania. So the liver is one of the most vital organs in your body. It's located in, your, in the right side of your abdomen typically. Uh, it's one of the largest organs of your body and it has uh, various uh, responsibilities. Most importantly, the liver is responsible for, responsible for detoxifying uh, your, the toxins in your bloodstream. So the portal system is a network of veins in your abdomen that essentially transport the blood from your abdomen, uh, from your intestines, from your spleen, back to the liver so that that blood can be detoxified and returned to your circulation. Portal hypertension is a condition where those portal veins meet some sort of obstruction which creates elevated pressure in this portal venous system. And the reason they meet this obstruction is generally related to some sort of liver disease and leading to cirrhosis. So cirrhosis of the liver can happen um, from overexposure to fatty foods, overexposure to alcohol throughout one's lifetime, or through viral infections like hepatitis. Patients who have portal hypertension can experience a wide variety of symptoms. Typically, uh, we see patients develop a large amount of fluid in their abdomen that needs to be drained every uh, few days or few weeks. Some patients develop fluid that builds up around their lungs, specifically their right lung more commonly than the left, which can create some shortness of breath. Other patients have more serious conditions related to their portal hypertension, conditions like gastrointestinal bleeding, which can be noticed from having very dark stools, having bloody stools, and some patients even vomiting blood. Patients who develop a buildup of fluid around their abdomen or around their lung typically can be initially managed by intermittently draining that fluid uh, through something called paracentesis or thoracentesis, where we give a small amount of lidocaine, numbing medication to the skin, and are able to drain that fluid. Patients who have more serious symptoms, such as bleeding from their gastrointestinal system, are initially managed by a gastroenterologist who will perform minimally invasive therapy to stop the bleeding. Having said that, these therapies, while they address the symptoms of portal hypertension, they don't necessarily treat the portal hypertension itself, which is the initial cause of these symptoms. A TIPS procedure, also known as a transjugular intrahepatic portosystemic shunt placement, is a procedure where we bypass the cirrhotic liver through a connection between the portal vein and the normal vein that drains the liver. I like to think about it as if there is a traffic jam in the portal venous system. What we're doing in a TIPS procedure is creating a detour that allows that traffic jam to be relieved and that pressure to be reduced. Mm -hmm. To prepare for your procedure, most importantly, you want to talk to your physician about which medications to continue taking and which medications you need to stop. Specifically, if you're on any blood thinning medications, you want to have an in-depth discussion with your physician about when and whether or not to stop the blood thinning medication. Another important note is to make sure you don't have anything to eat or drink mi that midnight before the procedure. A TIPS procedure is a generally safe and well-tolerated procedure. It's a minimally invasive image-guided procedure that can be performed either under moderate sedation, which essentially means that you'll be in some sort of twilight, but you'll be breathing on your own, or under general anesthesia. Like any procedure, there's always a risk of bleeding with the procedure. Having said that, we perform this procedure under continuous image guidance to minimize that risk. Generally, after a TIPS procedure, you'll be in the hospital for one night where your vitals will be monitored and we'll be monitoring for any signs of bleeding which can be managed in the hospital if needed. 
Besides bleeding, one of the other common complications is something called encephalopathy, which essentially just means bouts of confusion or delirium that you may not necessarily recognize, but the people around you might be able to recognize. This usually is caused by an increase in ammonia levels in your bloodstream that reach your brain. Having said that, if you do develop encephalopathy or these bouts of confusion, this can be managed by certain medications that can drop that ammonia level in your bloodstream. After the procedure, your doctor may want you to receive ultrasounds down the line uh, of your abdomen just to make sure that the tips have stayed open. Uh, in addition to that, if you start developing any of those same symptoms that you got the tips for, you should also call your doctor uh, just to make sure that the tips is still open.